Camping is one of the most popular outdoor activities in the nation. And while you see some big RVs on the road, in recent years, there's been a growing trend towards smaller, more retro type campers, a throwback to the 40s and 50s. And a popular campground in the Adirondacks has become an annual gathering point for these tiny travel trailers. Our Jack LeDuc shows us. The cocoon-like trailers are called teardrop campers because they resemble the misty-eyed droplet of water tumbling from your eye. The trailer's curved outline is also aerodynamic and efficient when hauled by a mid-sized car. The teardrop trailer came about after World War II. Companies like Grumman Aircraft had tons of surplus aluminum. They were no longer making aircraft for defense. Grumman had to find a commercial use for its leftover stock. The teardrop trailer produced an immediate use for the shiny metal. The dwarf-sized bed on wheels quickly caught on. With limited gas and tire availability, everyone had been restricted from traveling during the conflict. Wartime rations on goods were abandoned, and the public could now hit the road and have been doing so since then. It's a great way to meet people. Um, Number one, um, it's very simple. It gets you off the ground. It's the next upgrade from camping in a tent. There's great lakeside views here, along with kayaking, canoeing, a sand beach, and swimming at your doorsteps. Despite teardrops miniature size, there's good reason to like them. They get you off the damp, hard ground and can be set up in 10 minutes. Teardrops are easy to haul and they fit into almost any garage, keeping them from harsh weather. A true teardrop can weigh less than 700 pounds. About 50 trailers showed up this year for the annual gathering of the teardrops at Fish Creek Pond. But some of the trailers have taken on weight. A number of the early teardrop owners are now hankering for more elbow room, something lacking in the first models. Katie and Dave McGrath had this small trailer made recently to look like a hacker craft boat that gave them more space. What we did was we made the bed exactly the size for us. It's a little bit smaller than the people before us had made it, and it's quite a bit larger than the original Scotty but we wanted to be able to get a sink and a stove in. So we ended up with a 36 inch kitchen and then the bed is about 50 inches, I think. While there are 50 different manufacturers of teardrops, some road travelers like to do it themselves. I found them online and uh, I, I said, I can build one of those. It looks like a fun project to build. So I built a four by eight Woody originally and uh, used that a lot. Went all the way to Alaska and back with it. Went out to Colorado, went out to Montana, down to Virginia, and uh, decided to build an aluminum one. And so I, I built this. And the bucket of bolts held together all that time you were on the road? It did, yeah. It was a, a nice long trip. Uh, really tested out the, the design and kind of showed me what I wanted in my next trailer. This particular self-made camper caught the eye of every passerby. John Gardner built a gypsy-style van himself from online plans he found. It took him only three weeks to complete. The gypsy design allows you to put the bed crosswise and still have standing room in a 4x8 trailer. So we have a full-size double bed and it sits a thwart ship as we would sailors would say. And uh, so it works really well for two people. While some people prefer owning an antique car, a few travel trailer owners go retro. Back in the 1950s, the canned ham look was considered sleek. Some still love it. I like the vintage campers um, more than the newer campers um, that look vintage. Um, it just gives it more character and I think they're just adorable that when you when you drive down the road you get all these thumbs up and you know head nods and it, it's 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 a lot more fun. For Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Jack LeDuc at the Tear Up Gathering at Fish Creek.